All right, hello guys, and glad to have you on board again today. We move on with what's not going to be the end of it, but an additional series on my 2022 prediction types of plans. Um, though there will be following videos as well, which we have to talk about commodities and forex uh, joined with it. Uh, possibly both of them in a single video, which will probably be the last one in that perspective. Uh, but yeah, this one is the big one. We're going to dive into much more ideas and stuff like that. So far less charts than what we've done in the previous ones, because we're going to go for kind of a sum up information, talking about big, broad market cycles and how I've personally used them back in the past and how I intend to use them as well in 2022 to kind of framing what the market temperature is going to be all about, what the market sentiment might be. And there are hell a lot of options out there, but there is one that seriously stood out over the latest few years. And I've been using that thing for approximately two to three years. And I found that the accuracy of that system is pretty damn significant. So as every system, it is a model, though it is both great and has a lots of imperfections. So what I like with that system is that the imperfections are pretty damn easy to spot. But the good things to take out of it are as visible as well. So it's not a very complicated because all you have to take from these things that we're going to talk about today, no shit Sherlock, this is the economical confidence model of uh, uh, Mr. Armstrong. And in that perspective, well, it is a hell of a complicated system. Definitely, definitely complicated. But we do not necessarily need to dive below the surface on this one because the quality coming from this thing is just right at the surface. So no need to really understand everything about this model and whatever. Everything you have to know about Mr. Armstrong's economic model and how to efficiently use it to time the markets, not to predict them, certainly not, but use the knowledge he shares for free is far more than enough. There is paid stuff on that person as well, but I don't think it's actually worth it. But what's free is staggeringly great for a free thing. So let's dive into this today, how I use this economical confidence model, how I do join it with my personal visions, and more importantly, why am I going to use it today? Because, well, I had some things in my mind that are not necessarily that easy to put out there in terms of words and understanding educational contents. But I think at some point, the spread out economical confidence model of Mr. Armstrong is getting pretty damn close to what I had in mind for years. So this is kind of the broadest visions of what I have, that is my personal feelings and thoughts about the future, but put it in a much more convenient way for you to understand them. So this is the reason why I'm using it. Most importantly, this is a model. If you ever follow it like it is the God blesses guideline or whatever, then, oh boy, I do not pay too much attention to your future in trading because whoever follow a single model has never ever made it very long in the market, okay? Technical analysis and risk limitation is the only language of markets. Try to trade ideas without risk limitation and you're gonna have lots of troubles. So that being said, let's just jump right into what we care about. Though it's not gonna be only crypto related, but 2022, I've always made it clear, is going to be a complicated year to navigate, but these will explain mostly why. Okay, so the things that I've put it on the charts and I had recent questions about that, uh, uh, it's definitely what we're gonna talk about today. So you know everything about these cycle tops and bottoms and major cycle ends that I've been putting on my charts, finally. So let's get right down this rabbit hole. So in that perspective, okay, oh, and basically this one isn't there, don't know why it's been moved, but still, okay. So the things, is these cycle tops and bottoms are the current cycle predictions on the economic confidence model. So you have to understand that economic confidence model, and we're gonna use it just right now, okay? This comes from this people, so you're gonna easily find the website. Okay, so the economic confidence model is a broad-based thing. I recommend that you read at least the introduction of it so you'll understand how complicated it is and how definitely unpredictable this system is. Because if you want to predict a specific market uh, using the cycle, you'll see that there is, for example, a 60-year gold cycle followed by uh, some other sub-cycle and their economical confidence model. So basically, considering out that way, the one I'm personally using the most is the economic confidence model. It's the master piece that he's created and he has created sub cycle consequent cycle for other asset classes like gold housing 
all of these things which have different synchronizing periods. But you have to understand that the most valuable stuff is done is regarding economic confidence model. Most importantly, why do I use it now more than ever? Is because he says, according to what's a study given us for free, that we are oscillating across public and private sector uh, control of the economy, okay, economic confidence model, and that the confidence toward these public or private sector dominance of the economical behaviors are always cyclical, and we oscillate from public to private, and then when the private fails, we go back to public, and so on. So we know one thing for sure, out of this model, of course, that the next cycle is going to be about public sector. Reason why, it explains hell a lot of what he thinks what the future is made out of, and, well, turns out, it's definitely agreed to what I think as well for the future. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, so according to his global cycle of economic confidence, we are currently in the private sector dominance. This is why it interests us a lot, because the private sector is definitely the cycle we're into, dominated by private companies leading the economical confidence model in this perspective that we live in neo economic, um, um, in neoclassic economic era, in which basically free market is dominating uh, all of the uh, economical exchanges, or most of them, and we believe into this so-called market god, which of course will fail just like the public sector failed years ago. So in that perspective, it's just an oscillatory stuff that he has been mentioning, following some kind of recurrent cycle timings. In his timing, it takes approximately 50 years to reach out there, and basically the next cycle is about to terminate in 2032. What he tells us is that there is a recurring end of that cycle that terminates with deflationary pressures. So what he tells us is that right before the actual confidence model goes down, the market will peak because deflation means bearish price pressure. And then in that perspective, understand that the market top, the peak is far off this date. So if you think we're going to wait until 2020, uh, 2032 before uh, getting some market corrections, due diligence for deep corrections in here, we're talking about massive 50 years outflows. Well, no shit, Sherlock. We've gone entirely into the public sector winding down its effect on prices by lowering interest rates for decades now. And all of this will terminate with the private sector thing, meaning that an over indebted world in which private sector debt is going skyrocket. Then, in that perspective, all of this will end by 2032. But the prices, the market prices, may drop further. Uh, uh, um, may drop an anticipation. And from what he says, the deflationary cycle is very likely going to be peaking out of 2024, and the deflationary pressures, though the downside pressures and prices, may start between 24 to 2028. So it tells exactly, or at least he agrees to something that I personally had in mind, that a major deflationary crisis is headed towards us, that it will mark the end of that low interest rates and free credits that has been poured in the market for decades now, and which is unsustainable, just like everything is uh, um, and has an end. We're going for cycles, and cycles build up and rapidly shift down until the next cycle comes in, because that's what history has been all about. His study comes from very, very old ages. He has this cycle and has been studying them back in the antique years and so on, even before Jesus Christ. So it's really, really a hell of a massive amount of work that's been done to put out this thing. And I definitely, like I said, do not blindfully trust it. I had my personal ideas before I even met with this economical confidence model, but it definitely matched up with my personal ideas. Okay, so from what it says, 2024 is the area in which we'll start piling up the risks heading into deflation, and anyhow and anyway, it will not be more than 2028 to get the actual economical bearish pressures to happen on, well, multiple sectors, but like you said, there are multiple subsets like gold, housing, but the market pressure are likely the ones we see in the economic confidence model due to the fact that the private sector is dominating on a neoclassic economy system in which markets are the center of the economical pressures. So as the confidence in this model is expected to reverse by 2022, by 2032, the actual prices will likely anticipate. Okay, so that's the first element we know, and it correlates to what I always thought. Starting 2024 and for a few years down there, risks will start spiling up a great shitload of it meaning that bubbles will emerge, price bubbles will emerge and concentrate the value on a few defensive assets and targeted assets before, of course, 
going right down the cliff of deflationary pressure, which are inevitable looking at the amounts of debt that we've accumulated during this cycle, right before the next one starts. And the last one will likely be dominated by the public sector governance. So here is what we need to talk about next. So here's the detail of this private of this economic confidence model in which it's been putting in the real world to let you know more about what these cycles were all about. So it's been naming all of the picks and troughs back in the days, and it also gave us a glimpse of what he thinks the future is made out of, which is great because once again, pretty damn significantly pr close to what I had in mind even before knowing about this model. I've always pleaded to the fact that before the shift occurs and the deflationary pressure occurs, we'll likely get a commodity boom, which will very likely be concentrated about heavily demanded assets on precious metals, but metals in general, just like other necessary goods and services, which will be likely all of the uh, food and, um, uh, and liquid stuff. But I personally will never even trade that because, God damn it, I still have a conscience and I do not trade food. Though in that perspective, I'm going to circle around the commodities that I'm willing to trade, which are going to be metals, precious metals especially, and also, like I said, numeric commodities, the numeric gold, which is oh, digital gold, which is going to be Bitcoin, and digital oil, which is going to be ETH, are going to be, in my personal opinion, heavily demanded assets. Heading in 2024, they'll likely end up bubblish territory, meaning totally overpriced. It also has been predicting that the government rates will peak out of 2015, which, well, they did. This is where we started reaching out the zero knowledge afterwards, uh, the zero percent rates, and we so far have stood out there. So this is where we pick the government rates. It's not going to go negative territory. Of course, some yields might turn negative, but the core elements of yields will remain low forever. There might be some interest rates. We've talked about that in our yield review, but it's not necessarily going to be that big. The Fed will have to slow down, but the balance sheet will probably remain flat. So don't expect monetary hawkish stance. Just expect more of a normalization of the craziest ever dovish stance ever seen in the entire history of the Fed. Okay, it also predicted the monetary crisis, which is great once again, because it definitely happened. We had a monetary crisis doubled down from the COVID, which had created that monetary crisis by totally debunking the currencies themselves and created the inflation that we have seen so far, and it's not going to end. And it also predicts that the downside pressures that we'll see out of the commodity boom will be authoritarian regimes spreading out all over across the board. So this is also one thing that I've been predicting, that before peaking, before going absolute reverse, we're going to have an authoritarian uh, uh, rotation. Trying out those extreme leaderships will likely be done, not just in the US, but probably in Europe as well. But once it will be done, we'll rapidly see that these guys as well will disappoint us, just like the previous ones. So extreme politics will not change anything. And this is very likely what will cause the peak to occur. These guys will probably have totally misguided policies, which will drive us even faster into deflationary pressures. So I think authoritarian regimes are the ones that are going to drive down the market in deflationary pressure. These are the ones that will pop the bubble because of reckless politics. Though, yes, this is exactly what I had in store. And surprisingly, this guy has pretty damn significantly close to me, uh, uh, close, than I, uh, close to me predictions. Though the shift to China, I'm not 100% sure about it. But anyway, I mean, 2037, lots of things will happen until then. So I'm definitely not going down this further down the road roads. Okay, so now that we know everything about the confidence model, well, what are those peaks and valleys and top cycles and bottoms that I've been putting on my charts? Well, they come from this. This is the sub-economical confidence model that it puts, letting us to believe that actually what there is in here is that we see the minor cycles inside the major, major, major cycle. Okay, but what it tells that the minor cycles in here are also uh, uh, constituted of shorter cycles and that these cycles follow a path and that currently the path that we're into has been calculated with this thing. And he says, basically, we're going to increase up from peak from valley to peak. So the latest value was 2020 on January the 18th. Tells us that we're going to have a rise in the economic confidence model, meaning that people believe in the economy. That's basically what we've seen. OK, people making confidence bets on the economy because anyway, we were forced to. This was the Tina motive. There was so much money being printed that there was no other way but to trust the markets and to follow accordingly. Well, according to his thesis, the thing will end around March the 14th. 
that's the cycle top I have on my charts. So in that perspective, it's definitely not a perfect science. So don't get me wrong. If you say, okay, I'm going to sell on the March 14th, that's going to be great. Well, good luck with that. All it says is that basically the background pressures coming from the economic confidence, the market participants, because most of what we see in the current economic model is market price driven. So market prices confidence will increase because we had no other choice. Thank you, Jerome. But this will start dampen. Well, probably because the Fed is going to rise interest rate, but also because this model is doubling down on that as well. What it says is that until April 10th of 2023, we might not expect anything more than just a slow deterioration of the confidence model. Certainly not to retrace right down to where we were back in the COVID, because in the COVID, remember, no one gave a fuck about the market. The market was wrecked and it wasn't going to change. So we're certainly not going to go right back to the 2020 lows, but expect some kind of, oh, guess what? Consolidation. Like I said, the market prices on 2022 are not expected to go up. They are expected to price in inflationary pressure, so certainly not going bearish. We're not deflationary at all, and the inflation background is severely high, and we're very likely headed into stagflation territory. So very limited growth. We've assessed that back then and still believe deeply into this. But the inflationary background pressure will force investors to seek every little bit of growth that there could be around the globe. So money will chase a little bit of growth and they will go into safest assets. But globally, the confidence in the market is going down, meaning that there will not that be that much demand for the market in general. It will likely bottom around April the 10th of 2023. So expect a globally bullish end of the a bullish beginning of the year and then contraction all over the place afterwards no market crashes just corrections and then as we peak around apple 10th of 2023 we're expected then to rise back up again to build the final major market top around may the 7th of 8th or 8th of 2024 in which i personally think this is where he says that the commodity bubble will build itself and i definitely believe it as well that's what i intended to trade even before knowing about this thing so well this is where the bubbles will form this is where the final pick will be built before actual confidence deteriorates itself uh, det deteriorates itself and then at some point and i personally agree with its pie target meaning that around june the 28th of 2027 we should be in deflation so out of may 7th to 8th there will be June the 1st of 2026, approximately, to be a potential downturn, major downturn for the market. But anyhow and anyway, I do not believe it's going to go 2027, past 2027. So anywhere beyond, I would say, June the 1st of 2026 to June the 28th of 27, there will be one year in which there will be very likely the market switching into deflationary pressures, meaning that the market top will very likely be done by then. So is the market top going to be built on May the 7th or 8th? I doubt it, but this is where the actual underground bullish pressures will start to dampen and reverse. So this is where bubbles may fuel their demand automatically. Remember that bubbles are fueled just by the demand. But what he tells us is that starting around May of 2024, these demand will start to slow down. And remember that when the momentum is that crazily parabolic, just a little bit less of demand will start slowing down the momentum until the structure collapses on itself. So I expect the peak to be built slowly but steadily after the 20, uh, the after May of 2024, approximately. May being the moment in which the momentum will not be able to be increased, meaning less people will trust and put their money in the market, less money in into a parabolic scheming structure means we will be closer enough to the collapse. And then the destruction will likely trigger the credit bubble. So this is what I had in store, but understand it the way it is. This is the model I've been following. And I wanted you guys to know about that model for a long time. But what you need to understand is that 2024 is far off today and lots of things could change. So far, this is the model I use. Though I like to have to, to be and to have two steps ahead of what I'm doing today, but that doesn't mean I'm predicting two or three steps away from now. I'm caring about the next step. And the next step is I'm going to pay a lot of attention around March this year because this is where I think market will likely finally get in corrective territory. But what does that mean about cryptos? Because to be honest, in that big broad picture, I think that crypto is what's going to lead one of the public 
assumptions that we see for the next cycle. Remember that the cycles that we see, okay, coming from this economical confidence model, tells us that the next cycle will be led by public. And I think among these public actors, blockchains will be there. And remember that the seeds of the next cycle might already be there. They will likely bubble the hell in the end of the previous cycle, crash like it should do, and then rebuild into the next cycle. Even bigger though. So do I think cryptocurrencies will be part of the major actors of the next public big 50 year cycle? Yes, I think they are. The reason why I'm still very bullish in cryptos, but I also know that this will likely be separated by a bubble to crash ratio. I think cryptos will just bubble exactly like other commodities will do. Because I think that cryptos are new digital uh, 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 commodities, no more, no less. And as we're heading into more digital economies, I definitely believe that all commodities, digital included, will be the biggest performing assets heading into 2024. What that tells me as well is that the sub cycles will matter a lot because what is going to go bubble in 2024 must be trending first. Remember that trends transform into parabolic scheming sheets, but it always starts with high low points and high high points. So the assets that will overperform and go crazy bullish on 2024 might be trending already today. So this is the reason why I'm paying a hell of a lot of attention to the asset and asset classes that actually do provide those structures today. Though ETH is one of them, Bitcoin is one of them, okay? They might change course within the next few days and weeks if for some reasons they keep pressuring it down. Until further notice, they do have higher low points and higher high points. And I still expect them to peak somewhere around 2024. So if they are on the verge to go parabolic, to go bubble, that means hell a lot of things are actually aligning. I told you multiple times that we might have broken multi time frame trends in here, broken daily, weekly and monthly charts, which create multi time frame trend structures, which oh end up parabolic, of course, meaning that the broader time frame, the monthly chart time frame, though, in our perspective, will end up in a parabolic scheme, meaning that as we will do the daily pullback, which we did with ETH, will likely go up again, create the monthly, uh, the weekly pullback. And then as we will go at the end of the weekly trend, it will go normally parabolic. So lots of things tend to be aligning. I've always pleaded for an extended cycle on cryptos due to this multi time frame breakouts. Turns out heading into 25 or 25, was my plan all along and the economic confidence model actually suggests the same. So do we have an extended cycle going on? I still believe there are heavy chances of it to happen. If that's really one thing, then understand that there will be no other thing but the higher high points and higher low points until we go parabolic. Also understand that the best of these trends, everyone is having 20,000k to 20k targets or whatever on ETH might eventually be right but it's gonna take way longer than they think. And to be honest, well, I do have these targets as well. And I know that we're not gonna met them anytime soon. I also know that we're gonna to have to suffer a consolidating, a consolidating cycle starting around March this year, heading into April next year. It mean, this means an entire year of consolidation in which the demand will not necessarily be crazy high, but we have a demand pattern, an adoption curve on cryptos. So are we going to maintain higher high points and higher low points? I think we do, but what we're going to, what we're going to get is more like a bullish range than a trend. Understand that if we terminate parabolic, then God knows how high these things will price. But until then, it's going to look like that deep retracement still, but going up. So yeah, I think cryptos are the digital commodities that will be heavily demanded, but they will peak around 2024. But before that, they will just trend. And they will trend not with the crazy momentum that we've seen back then, but building themselves to the multi time frame structures that we know about. In that perspective, the market will likely buy the dip, make all time highs without going too crazy about it, then it will dip again to create the weekly pullback and then the parabolic scheme will eventually occur. Or not, because like I said, I'm one step ahead of the market, not two or three. 
So until further notice, my confidence model or the comfort, the economic confidence model is the model I use to time my demand factors. And as cryptos are mostly due to the demand factors today, due to the fact that we know the supply is absolutely crazily limited today. There are not that many coins circulating on the exchanges. So the demand is now still rising. Reason why I'm very, very surprised with the recent drops in cryptos. And I definitely plead for them to be eventually just short-term noise because the demand is supposed to peak around March and not now. So I do believe that by March, we're going to make new all-time highs. That doesn't say by March because I don't like dates, but understand that timings means I think around Q1, Q2 this year, we'll go all-time highs again because higher low points, higher high points. I do not think we're going to surge like people think of it, but I think, yes, we're going to have to settle prices for a higher degree and possibly the next target for me will be maximum 8,000 for an ETH. And then, of course, we're going to have to suffer the withdrawal effect from cycle top to cycle bottom. So I don't know how high we'll go. All I know is that the weekly pullback will likely correlate between the actual cycle top to bottom that Armstrong has been saying. Because, like I said, I'm using my model, my personal statistic risk limitation model, but I'm also accounting for the timing that Mr. Armstrong has shared with us. So in that perspective, it all tends to align all together and give me approximate timing. So from what I know, I'm going to remain bullish until Q1, Q2 this year. Then I'll switch to more neutral stance and consolidative stance, but we're certainly not going to break any significant support, weekly based support. And then I suspect the demand will shift right up again. And then, of course, as the supply will be so limited on cryptos, this is where I think bubbles will start to price as people's demand to terminate both the adoption cycle and the economic confidence model cycle will push people toward asking for these commodities, whether they are real world commodities or digital commodities. And so far, of course, no one knows what these digital commodities will be in 2024. But there is a large consensus saying that Bitcoin and ETH are guaranteed ones. We'll see if this change down the future. But do I have a negative stance for cryptos? No, I don't think so. Those who will win that battle and be the most demanded cryptocurrencies or commodities in 2024, if such a thing ever occurs, will definitely keep trending this year. They will keep making all-time highs. They will not spend most of their time in all-time highs. They will spend most of their time this year and the beginning of next year around to consolidate but they will likely not crash. That's the reason why I've said I don't think major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and ETH will have significant drawdown this year. Of course, well, it started pretty off right now. But once we terminated that downside pressure, I think we're going to go all-time highs, yes. And I think once we do, the next corrective cycle will likely be not that deep. ETH might be doing some other 50% retracement, but I sincerely doubt Bitcoin will. I've said it already, I think Bitcoin will not exceed 35 to 40% drawdowns once we figured out this one. And I still stand for it. The market will find its way into building a bottom sooner or later because there's no circulating supply into the bigger cryptocurrencies. All of the craziest speculative bullshit will likely collapse as well. Like we said, this is kind of a gamble. There are lots of horses out there and there's certainly no more than 20% of them that will actually turn out to be on the finish line and not all of them will be in the pole position. So understand it that way. Spreading out the portfolio or buying bullshit now is not going to make you rich. Stick to the good assets because most of what's going to be demanded eventually two years from now is already trending today. So if your asset isn't trending, might be very risky to pile into this. You have at most two years into today and a possible pick in demand. So make sure that your plans can fit into this time frame. At least this is what I think can be valuably taken out of these things. I've shared my personal ideas and free to you to adopt them and like them or not. We can discuss about that forever. But what I think you can all profit from is that this economic confidence model gives you at least some guidelines and time scales. And I've been coming across lots of models throughout the years, but this one really stood out. And I think it's definitely worth it that you guys know about it. So final warning, 
do not take too much time dive deeping into these projects to know everything about it like it is the new gold mine that you missed and that's the thing that will finally explain everything about the market timings that you've been so poorly at doing recently this is not a magic tool this is at best a guideline remember that the only thing that is not questionable in markets is risk limitation you might have all the crazy ideas that you want as long as you risk manage them when you want to actively trade them this is what makes you a trader rather than the other ones which is basically putting them gambles in the market and letting the futures decide we are not playing a random game in markets that's the difference between the professionals the ones that will last over time and the ones that are just there for the short-term gambles okay so always bear that in mind i hope today's was helpful for you guys i hope you've learned something new but do not take too much time dive dipping into armstrong's theories bye guys